Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Monkey Wrench. I'm Kelly, the monkey with the wrench. And today, we're working on yet another machine. This is a Troy built Super Bronco. The Super Bronco, not just the Bronco. And this particular machine has a 20 horse Kohler Courage. Not my favorite motor in the world. Uh, anybody that watches my channel knows I'm a Briggs fan. All day, every day. But Kohler would probably be my second favorite. I hate Honda and I hate Kawasaki because they put too many plastic parts in them. But that's neither there nor here. So the customer called me up. He's a regular customer of mine. Not because I don't repair his stuff well because he has multiple machines. And he asked me to come out, take a look at this thing. The belt, the drive belt had shredded itself. And uh, you know, it's pretty typical on these riders. Drive belts down here. It's a two drive system. I don't know if you can see that, but this is one drive belt and this is the other. So I first put on a new one, which doesn't take too long and started it up and it started making some crazy noise and i could smell the bear the belt burning so when that happens you shut it off immediately you stop you think what did i do wrong i'm the one that installed it so what did i do wrong well the bottom line without too much further ado is it wasn't my fault upon further inspection what i found was this this is your variable speed drive pulley. Now this is on uh, dozens of machines and it's a floating pulley, okay? So your bottom belt that attaches to the motor up in the front and through all the pulleys along the body, that goes on the bottom here. And then the top belt just uh, goes into your transmission here so that you can drive. So one powers the unit and the other one is to be able to move it and what had happened was see what had happened was i couldn't tell at first what was going on until i realized check this out let me uh let me put the camera down here if i can hang on all right so what had happened was this pulley slides up and down and it runs on a set of bearings. Now, I don't know if you can see that very well, but this is not supposed to be wobbling, okay? And what happened right now is, the long and the short of it, is that right inside of here, this is bearings. These are ball bearings that are in there, and there's half of them are missing. I'm sure you're not gonna be able to see that. Let me see if I can get some light on this thing. See the ball bearings that are in there and the space between them and how it's all crooked in there and right now they are moving around so it's kind of jammed but that is supposed to be the same amount of space all the way around and they're supposed to be ball bearings all the way around touching each other and because they've all moved to one side I can't even really show you how bad this thing's wobbling. You see how the, watch the screw go up and down. Okay, this whole thing is toast. Now it's taken because of the pandemic, because of shipping problems, because of the war over in Ukraine. I don't know why. The prices have gone crazy on these things and they want... Well, they want as much for that pulley as you can buy a used riding mower for. So I talked to the customer. He said, find me a used one. I got a buddy of mine that runs a junkyard for lawn tractors around here. And I have had him on high alert. I've had a couple of guys across the state on high alert. And it's taken like three months 
to find a used one of these. Now, don't worry about the fact that it looks a little surface rusty. Uh, what's important, as you see there, okay, you see how you have the same amount of space all the way around. I'm trying to come out in the sunlight, it's about to rain. But you have the same amount of space all the way around here and in this case you can't see those ball bearings a there's a little bit of dirt in there but b there's also a little rubber uh sort of an o-ring or a grommet that is in there that covers them over and keeps the grease on them so there is no movement whatsoever that's what was wrong with this thing and as it spins it got hot the bearings wore out nobody greased them nobody ever greases those uh it takes somebody that runs a repair shop like me to know to even grease them but uh it didn't get greased the grease wore out this thing spins 3,500 times a minute it got hot it burned up the bearings it melted out the rubber o-ring and the bearings just disintegrated and then the pulley went wonky screwed up the belt ripped the belt off uh, it happens now Buying that pulley If you can buy it new or used is absolutely worth it uh, Don't scrap a tractor over it. This thing is actually in good shape. It's a little dirty right now Because if you've watched my other videos, it's been sitting over there in the corner uh, And then we had you know leaves coming off the trees and so it needs a good bath And I had to air up one of the tires. It's been sitting for a while and uh, he had it sitting at his place for like two months because he got COVID. So it's been sitting for about six months. So I'm going to give it a, a clean up. And I am going to put the new pulley in place. Now I'm not going to show you the installation. Uh, I will sort of. You see there's three bolts right here. Okay, oops. There's three bolts here. One, two, three. And they line up right down there on the frame okay so when you know where it goes the bolts come in from the outside of the machine so i'm going to go here between the wheel and the frame and i'm going to put the bolts in i'm going to feed the pulley down where it's supposed to be and i'm going to screw those bolts in and i'm going to tighten them up and all i have to do then is feed these two belts around the pulley if you're not sure which is which look inside the machine uh, one is higher than the other the drive belt is the longer belt or the the motor belt is the longer belt and it's down low clearly there's you know an inch or so between the shorter one this right here is a tension arm so that will move when i'm ready the belt the top belt goes around that and that will move in order for me to feed the belt onto the top pulley so I'm going to clean this up, get most of the surface rust off of here. It looks bad, but it still feels smooth. Uh, I'm going to grease it. I'm going to shoot it with some oil. Then I'm going to bolt it in place, feed the belts back around, and I'll show you what that looks like after the fact. So right now, it goes in right over there. Okay. So when you see this in a second, it'll be in place. Come on, stop. Now I can hear the questions already. The top of the pulley doesn't matter. The only thing that sits on top of this is the battery and the seat that moves out of the way. So it constantly gets wet. These constantly get surface rust on them. If you're worried about it, which you shouldn't be, just take a little bit of sandpaper. You can take that off. What's important is the space in here, top and bottom, bottom and top this is a double-sided slip here so all you have to do to clean that up a little bit take any sandpaper okay and just take the rough bits off top and bottom top and bottom okay it's still smooth as a baby's buttocks in here. 
but you can see that little surface rust comes right off no problem at all so I'm just going to take the sandpaper take all this stuff off of here I'm gonna do the edges here the edge here I'm gonna get up in here and make sure that there's no no burrs that's what I'm looking for again I'm not worried about the surface rust the belt will actually take that off when you get it installed but I'm gonna run around it with a little bit of sandpaper make sure that there's no burrs in there there's no metal that's sticking up and then I'm just gonna shoot it with some good old-fashioned grease all over the thing uh, wipe it down real good I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of carb cleaner to get the excess grease off of it what I want to do is protect the, the metal okay without getting oil all over the belt you get oil in the belt then it wants to slip uh, people will tell you that the belt won't work and all that you, you got to have a lot of oil you got to have a lot of caked oil on a belt in a belt for it not to work a little film of oil on there to protect this stuff from rust again it's not a big deal but do it at your own discretion all right now take you back outside a little cloud cover but basically all I did was just what I said okay I can't see in the lens of my camera but I just took the sandpaper this middle one actually spins freely by itself I just took sandpaper top bottom top bottom around the edges to make sure that it was all smooth surface rust doesn't matter coloration doesn't matter you're just looking to make sure that there's no burrs or anything like that that will mess up the belt when you put the new belt on that's all there is to it you clean it up you spray it down this is going back on the tractor okay now what I did was I went ahead and put the pulley in place there it is I put the three bolts in in but I didn't tighten them down so there's still enough room for this to move now the first thing that you're gonna have an issue with is that there is a metal keeper right here and in order to get the lower belt past that keeper you have to use your fingers and you have to go in there and you have to pull that middle pulley all the way to the top if you feed that side of the belt in first because it's easy and there's no keeper you won't be able to squeeze that middle pulley up towards the top because the belt will be in the way so you have to start with this side pull that middle pulley up as far as you can feed the belt into the lower side of the pulley between the keeper then you can put the other side on then the then the middle pulley floats where it's supposed to now all i have to do is take this upper belt remember i said there's a tension arm right there so i'm gonna push that to get the tension and get that belt around the pulley and that's it now they don't give you much room to work on these things you have this little battery box which is barely enough to get one arm in let alone two you have a little bit of space here between the frame and the wheel inside of there so what i did was i took this piece of rope same rope from my last video trash rope i ran it through the hole on that spring assisted arm ran it out the side of the tractor then i just reached in here like this grabbed it with my hand and pulled this way at the same time i reached in from here and pushed on that arm so i could get that arm to come over far enough to feed that upper belt right around that upper pulley easy peasy goes around that pulley that pulley and that tensioner arm that's it it's a very small short belt so if you use a little piece of rope you can pull that arm over feed the belt over it let it spring back now i got to take that rope off and i got to tighten those bolts on the side i just put them in they're right there i just put them in by hand far enough to hold that pulley so it could still move and wobble while i did what i needed to do with the belts it makes life easier if you leave it loose now on this particular tractor the bolts in question are one two three that's it that's what holds that entire pulley on right there those three belts and you can see it's 
between the frame and the rear wheel on the left side if you're looking straight at it now i gotta take this rope out of here pardon me for a second if you leave that in there it'll get caught around those pulleys and you'll have all kinds of trouble so take the old rope out throw it back in the trash pile now my pulleys are all in place large pulley this is track this is on the top of the transmission it goes around the top part of the pulley we just installed and it goes to that tension arm so it is always tight okay that's always tight because that's when you put it in gear forward and reverse now the other belt the actual motor drive belt you can see that can move in my hands the reason for that let me see if I can push it over you see how far that'll go and watch what happens see how it straightens right out I'm pushing the gas pedal basically this is a variable speed transmission the harder you push the gas pedal the tighter it makes that belt the tighter it goes on that pulley the faster it goes it's just that simple so when you're done testing it there's there's really not any way to mess up the belts one belt that goes around the top is only about I don't know I think 26 inches long so it's about the size of a large pizza and the other belt has to be long enough to stretch from the back of the tractor all the way up to the front it's uh 98 inches or something so you really can't put the wrong belt the right belt in the wrong place it's only one place for it to go it's only one way for it to go so all i'm gonna do now and here i'm using the same clip i use this for everything i used this in my last video to show you why your machine won't start after this after the winter time and you go out in the spring to cut your grass for the first time and your machine won't work use that tool or the same piece of string that I just used on this riding mower to fix that problem so don't tell me that you don't want to invest in tools okay don't tell me that you don't really have the knowledge the same rocket scientist those bolts just tighten them crank them down you don't need specs and uh, you know torque wrenches and all that crap just tighten it down all it is is a, a frame uh, that holds a pulley in place that's it and to fix this machine I used one tool a 10 millimeter socket which I know everybody has a little socket set okay or a box wrench you can use a regular old wrench 10 millimeter to take those three bolts out right there I used a piece of rope to pull the tensioner over to get that belt off okay and I used that little clamp you just saw just to hold these wires out of my way because they were, you know, they drive you crazy. They're always falling in places you don't want them to fall and they're in your way. So now I'm going to put my little battery box holder thingy back in place. Okay. This is really difficult to install, so you got to pay attention here. All right. It slides in there. And you got to make sure that your wires are free, negative and positive for your battery. And make sure your little rubber cup is up high enough you can get to it, okay? And now your battery box is installed. Real difficult, right? Not even any tools required. So I'm going to reinstall my battery. The only other tool I'll need is a wrench for these nuts. I'm going to put a little grease on them too. Uh, to tighten those leads onto the battery. And then we're going to, I don't think it's going to start. It's been sitting for six months. I'm going to turn it over, see if I can get it to start. If not, I'm going to have to pull the carburetor off and clean it, which I totally figure I will. And that gas is six months old, so I'm going to drain the old gas out, clean the carburetor, and then I'm going to start it up. And we're going to drive this thing around for a few minutes and let you know that even though I talk a lot, and this video is longer than it should be, it's easy to fix the things on your tractor. Don't let an expensive pulley that's hard to get to intimidate you. I used one tool, one wrench, one socket. That's it. A piece of string. It's done. 
I do these videos this way, even though I have tons of tools and I have projects going on and, you know, I have tons of everything. I do these things with stuff that you might have laying around your house. I know you got a piece of string uh, and I know that you've got a 10 millimeter wrench or socket. And if you don't, your neighbor does. So I would charge under normal circumstances to replace this it's about two hours labor uh plus the part but like i said i charge between 50 60 dollars an hour for labor so it would have cost him 120 bucks plus the part just for me to fix this thing you can save yourself a lot of money by watching my videos please hit the thumbs up button or the thumbs down button i don't care which just show youtube that you're interacting with my videos if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, please help me reach a thousand. And uh, my channel's been taken off a lot real quick, and I appreciate every one of you that watch. See you soon. Okay, guys. Uh, I cheated. I did this off camera to make sure. But let's start it up and take it for a ride. The deck has not been put back on yet, clearly. It's standing over here. I've got to clean it up, get some stuff that's wrapped around the blade off, and reinstall it. But we are testing the pulley that we installed, which works both the drive pulley and the deck or and the transmission, uh, not the deck belt. That is a different belt, so we don't have to hook up the deck and all that. Just make sure nothing's hanging down from underneath. That's the engagement lever spring right there for the deck. Make sure that's not hanging down. Make sure nothing's in the way. And let's see if this pulley is going to work. You should be able to see it right around. You're looking to make sure, don't listen to the engine. The carburetor needs to be clean so it doesn't run the greatest. But you're, you're looking to smell burning of the belt you're listening for sounds, grinding noises, things like that. Let's see what happens. jumping around that's because it's backfiring believe it or not that fuel is has not been changed i did not drain the old fuel out because i wanted to see what kind of situation we were going to be in uh if it was a dead no start no start whatsoever then i knew that i was going to have to put that carburetor through the ultrasonic cleaner two or three times to get everything clean after pulling it apart but thankfully, my man Carlton uses non-ethanol fuel. He goes to the gas station that around the corner that actually sells non-ethanol fuel. So even though that fuel is six months old, it didn't have ethanol in it, so it didn't go bad yet. Carburetor's going to get a quick tickle through, clean it up. I'm going to adjust the idle, make sure the air filter's in good shape. That can all cause it to run rough. But you saw, I drove this thing around. Uh you know out to the end of my yard and back and forward and reverse works fine she's run she's driving smooth uh i don't feel anything it shouldn't be feeling and i don't smell anything i shouldn't be smelling which tells me everything's good to go and back in place as soon as i clean this carburetor i can give it back to my man after months of waiting on this part so thanks for stopping by see you soon